good morning. Uh, yeah, I was just happy to hear. I I believe that what you're saying is that you've been given a big list from our team and you're going to get that going for them. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen the I messages, but not able to not able to move on it because it's just been a mm -hmm. crazy week. But I did reach out to Payworks and we have a meeting set up for tomorrow. So that was good. Um, I'm happy for you. I think that you'll find Payworks to be uh what you need the thing about payworks is it's a little more done by you like you know than adp is like there's some stuff that you, you know if you want a uh record of employment you have to go in and print it out yourself or click a button to send it whereas adp you can just tell them you want it done but if you're looking for if you're on a bit of a budget then it really does work like We've been with Payworks for a few years now. When we, I think we started with them in 2021 in uh, January. And I keep thinking that'll go to ADP because they have a lot that, you know, once you're a corporation that would help. But the the price of Payworks, I mean. I'm going to weigh the pros and the good. cons and then figure out what's good for me. Yeah. Because... I, I don't want to be having my hands into it like that. I don't like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I. the thing about having a payroll processor that's so important is that they have liability insurance. So if, if you make a mistake on your payroll and the government finds out or the IRS in the U.S. finds out you could be you could be fined if you make like just little clerical errors could cause a fine. Now, if you have ADP or Payworks or some other payroll processor, what happens is that they take the responsibility of that. So if they make a mistake, they cover the fines. And the fines for payroll can be pretty huge. Like they could be in the tens of thousands of dollars. And for a new business owner, that could really take you out. Um, yeah. And I did, I did run my payroll through QuickBooks for the first, well, four years. Um, and that was because that was before I knew better, right? I just didn't know better. And then when I realized the significance and what could happen to my business if I screwed up. And of course, as I got busier, I didn't have as much time to be learning about the rules and regulations. Um, now I just don't worry about it anymore. With, for me, payroll is the only thing I do is verify timesheets and, and I don't do it. Somebody on my team does it and plug in the numbers. It's not a, it's not, it's a non-issue now. So I think our payroll costs us, you know, we had, we had a 1.50 employees and I believe it was 20 bucks an employee. So what is, that can't be right. Hold on a second. No, sorry. It's four ninety five an employee, five dollars an employee, not fifty. <laughs> I knew something was wrong. I was like, it doesn't cost me a thousand dollars every payroll run, so it cost me about a hundred bucks a payroll run. But for uh, fifty employees, that's really that's really nothing to worry about when you consider how many mistakes you can make with that many employees. Yeah. Just my two cents. I didn't mean to steal your uh, stage there, but you got me thinking and. Uh, and the big reason for the big grin was I'm so excited about the CEO Freedom Program. I'm so excited that things are really starting to rev up for those of you that are involved in it, that we're starting to get your systems and processes organized and running. And uh, yeah, I'm excited as well because we just decided in our morning meeting this morning, we brought on a new CEO Freedom uh, member. This uh, Well, we're onboarding him today, Sheen. Uh, so it's time to hire a couple more VAs. So I'm excited about that. What I love is that we have we have three VAs working full time now. Uh, we'll have two more within the next week, and we're having the work to keep them going. And we're able to create the systems so that we have the right people doing the right things. So it's working, and I'm so excited. So the more work you give us, the more systems we can create. And if you know me, you know I love systems. 
Yeah. Uh, so um, go ahead. Yeah, I'm looking forward to having a great week. I'm just trying to get my ducks in a row and doing do my part so that you guys can do yours. That's amazing. I love it. I'm looking forward to a great week as well. Yeah. Thanks, Peter, so, for the stage. Yeah. I'm done. I'm off. Yes, and thank you so much, Peter, for taking care of things while I just did that one uh, chore that I had to do. Um, oh, my allergies are going nuts. Can you guys tell? I'm like scratching my eyes, wiggling my nose. Um, celebration. So, Misha, have you got some celebrations for us? Oh, we can't hear you. Saw her shrugging her shoulders. That can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I don't really have a whole lot. I'm just doing little bits of stuff. And nothing huge, I guess. So, <laughs> but. Uh, just still, still uh, slow and steady steps forward for you? Yes, yes. Yeah. I bet you're getting excited about your website, hey? Uh, we were just talking about your website in our morning meeting. Um, and I'm getting excited about it too. Yeah, me too. Your colors, yeah. your colors are so amazing together. I would have never thought to put those colors together, but when I see your stuff with those colors, I really like it. So, yeah, uh, BJ is working on your website today. He's just got a few things to take care of this morning. He's working okay. on yours and you and somebody else's. He's doing um, for the first look. So. That's pretty exciting. That's exciting. What yeah, happens? I'm looking forward to it, yeah. So. What happens with the first look is I always like to warn people because I think people, I don't want people to expect like this amazing, like done website. The first look is basically our, our generic, we've got your pages set up to what we think you want and we've got the concepts, content to what we think you want. And we go through the first look and we just go through it item by item and personalize it to you. So um, yeah. it's my favorite call. Cause I know, uh, yeah, we did one for my husband and so it was the same thing. So I kind of know what to expect, I guess. So mm -hmm. yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, so uh, yeah, and we have a meeting coming up this week too, I think, I believe. Yeah, Tuesday, so. Good, good, looking yep. forward to it. Me too. Awesome. Thank you. Say hi, say hi. Nice. He's sure he's a mama's boy, hey. He's the one that's always on your lap. Yeah, he's he wakes up early, so mm -hmm. it's a little past that's seven here. So he wakes up early, my early riser. Yeah, and yes, he is a mama's he, boy. <laughs> yeah, you get your morning bonding time. That's beautiful. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, we'll uh, go on to celebrations, and we'll come back for solution finding. And so next on my screen is Veronica. How are you doing, Veronica? Good morning, how are you? Good. Um, I'm honestly just taking advantage of the down season to continue reconstructing um, my business. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a good time actually. For us, we have a down season as well. And I, you know, the, down, the down season is it's just hard on everybody. You know, it's because you're so used to the busy and the money flowing and then the down season comes and, you know, you're sort of starting to kind of tighten the belt a little and you're watching what you're spending. And, and nobody likes that, right? We all like to be all, always up. But I also take advantage of down season to create new systems. We um, look at all of the issues that we had last year. We create new systems and SOPs for next year. And we focus on that while we're focusing on marketing. And um, we use it as an opportunity to kind of regain control. Because I don't know about you. I don't know your business well enough yet. Uh, but for us, our busiest time of year is May to October. And we are like, we are just running. We are just on the go. We 
depend on the systems from last year to keep us going, but there's always something that pops up. Like uh, this year, we've just decided that's enough. We're creating a new system for uh, laundry. We're sick and tired of laundry being an issue. So that's what we're focusing on this winter is finding solutions for laundry. Last winter, we had like five things we had to focus on. This winter, one. So each year it gets better. But I distract my mind with um, creating systems and strategies for next year so that I don't focus so much on the down season. Because the down season is kind of a bummer for everybody, no matter what. No matter how prepared you are, it's still a bummer. So, uh, do you mind if I ask how your grandson is doing? Uh, yes, he's improving. He's improving. Glad to hear it. Yeah, thank you for asking. He's been on our thoughts all weekend. Peter and I have uh, quite, like, if I wasn't thinking of Peter was, he's like, have you heard from Veronica? How is your grandson? <laughs> so between the two of us, we've been praying for you, for your family and for your grandson. And I'm really thank glad to hear that he continues to improve. Thank you. Thank you. It's important to know that people that you don't even know are rooting for you are rooting for you. <laughs> I feel. Thanks. We'll come back around for solution finding. Uh, Elizabeth, it's so great to see you here. It's been a long time. Uh, uh, yeah. Isaac. <laughs> I'm just going to meet you, Misha. Where'd she go? Elizabeth. I don't know. Where am I? You're here. <laughs> okay. I don't I can't see anybody, but that's fine. Um so as far as like celebrations, um one, I actually got to make this call because I usually don't. So I'm actually on my way to a, a B and B that we've got to turn this morning. But um I've really been focusing on getting like with my accountant and finding out like things that weren't being done that needed to be done are now starting to, to get done and get done on time. Mm -hmm. um, because it was basically like, I was going to have to look for a different accountant because taxes that are supposed to be paid quarterly weren't getting paid on time. And then I was receiving letters and like, that's what I'm paying her to do. So we just kind of had a heart to heart and now she realizes that even though I'm probably one of the smallest companies that she works with, that the, the work is still just as important. And mm -hmm. so as far as me following up with that, that was a big deal because usually I'm so tied up in the cleanings that I don't get to get to my paperwork and like the administration part of everything mm -hmm. so yeah. getting more organized on that end I think is going to help when with what we're working on as far as like trying to get new, new clients and stuff like that with having that part of it organized it won't be as difficult to stay on top of everything you know, it's so, I'm I'm just so happy for you standing up for yourself saying just because I'm a small business doesn't mean that I'm not important and holding her accountable. I think it's a her, isn't it? Yes. That's uh, so impressive because that's what so many people forget is that they, they say, oh, you know, I don't, I don't pay as much because she, I don't need as much of her time. So I don't just, you know, I'll just wait in the background or whatever. It's not true. Everybody should be taken care of. It's it's actually a conversation that I had with my team today. Uh, no, it wasn't my team today. It was one specific person last week that I said, every single client matters. Just because you uh, have a special, like one of our team members has like a connection, a special connection with one of our clients and tends to give more service to that client. I'm like, no. They all are important. They all pay to be here and they all must be taken care of according to our highest standards. And that's true from the other side of things when you're dealing with a service provider. Make sure 
they understand that you want to be treated just the same as everybody else or go find somebody that will the basic yeah and I think when I had that conversation with her because I am very blunt and straightforward most of the time that she understood like I did it in a professional manner but she really understood that I was serious because most of our conversations are really quick because I am trying to I'm having to do most of the cleaning so I don't have the time to go to her office and see her face to face and I literally got a letter from uh, the Department of Revenue about stuff that she was supposed to take care of that she hadn't and I went and made the time to go talk to her and say like I understand I'm really small but I'm just as important as these bigger companies that you're working for. And if you can't handle my little company, then I just need to know so I can go find somebody that will. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> and then she you're just the like magically kicked it into gear. And I was just like, where has this been this whole time? Because I didn't realize after we started getting stuff going that just by knowing those things were took care of and they weren't looming in the back of my mind as un you know, unsolved problems that it took stress that I didn't really realize I even had off of my plate. And I was just like, oh, this is kind of nice. You know, Elizabeth, you just continue to march forward. Hey, like uh, that's what I was just thinking about you. Just every step you take is a step in the right direction. Well, I'm trying. <laughs> You're doing amazing. You really are. You're just doing amazing. You're taking charge and you're creating accountability. You know, these are all such positive, positive forward steps. I'm, I'm so happy for you. You should be celebrating that. Yeah. I'm, and I'm also just happy because like, I'm actually holding myself accountable for things more than I was because it's easy when you're in the thick of everything to be like oh but I, I you feel like you're doing everything that you possibly can because you're constantly doing stuff but sometimes mm -hmm. it's worth it to just step back take a look at the bigger picture and then just start prioritizing and do some self-accountability I'm like yeah you know I am doing a lot but maybe just maybe I need to re reorganize some of the priorities the list of priorities that I'm doing things in because I've noticed that like I was taking care of a lot of things but I wasn't always taking care of the the, the bigger things first because I was so mm -hmm. worried about doing a little bit of everything so I think with holding yourself accountable that you can in turn like make your life and those that are helping you their job's so much easier and even the little things start to add up to be the 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 bigger time like you get more time back by finishing those little things and just making little changes it's true that's such a great point i i just love it what you got me thinking about was well actually peter and i took what day was that was it, it was in the morning, you know, I think it was yesterday morning and we got to stay in bed late, which was like, I think it was like 7.30. And I was doing something on, on my phone and I, and I, I don't even remember what it was, but I created forward momentum. Oh, it was finding a, finding a platform. So I haven't been very happy with the platform for our employee training module or our employee training uh, portal. And somebody sent me an email offering me a free uh, free info session, something. And I went and looked at it and I said, oh my goodness, I think this is what I need. I think this is what I've been looking for. I think this is the answer to our problems. And Peter said, and you know, if we hadn't stayed in bed late today, you wouldn't have even noticed that email. And I was like, you're right. Sometimes taking a step back and some time for yourself allows you to find the opportunities or the solutions that are right in front of your face, you know? Yeah, because like one of the biggest things is for me was checking email and opening mail that, that, that comes in because I have a really bad habit of stacking the mail up on my desk. And then when I finally get some downtime, I go through it and I actually like 
stopped and was like, you know, I should probably start opening this up. And that's how I found out that like she wasn't paying quarterly taxes on time. So in return, I'm paying late fees by not taking two minutes to open mail and read it when it comes in. Like it's something so simple that you just kind of want to smack yourself. Honestly, I did. Cause I was like, seriously, chick, two minutes could have saved you how much money. And it's just one of those simple things that you're like, why was I not doing this? And knowing that it could make such an impact. So it's, it's been an eye opener and I've got to get more organized and hold myself accountable for doing things just like I would if one of the, uh, a cleaner wasn't doing what they needed to be doing in a client's property. You know, if I'm going to hold somebody else accountable, I have to be as willing to hold myself and be honest with myself as I am with someone else. If it was to be someone else, you know? Yeah. Wow. You know what? Uh, That's the CEO mindset right there. That's going from a solo cleaner or an employee mindset to a CEO mindset. It is your job to oversee the operations and make sure everything is being taken care of. It's that's your accountability. That's that's amazing. You're really stepping, you're really stepping into being that CEO now. I'm really trying. Like, and I've noticed that like through the positivity that I've been putting towards my business and the self-accountability, like it trickles over to other areas of your life, which just in turn just creates more goodness. <laughs> Yeah, more goodness. I love that. More goodness. <laughs> so true. Yeah, so true. That's amazing. Thank you for that share. That was really inspirational. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you all. We'll uh, come back. We're going to go around the room for celebrations and we're going to come back for solution finding. So if you have anything that you need help with, just uh, just keep it in your thoughts and we'll be back. Okay. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Moffat, hi, so nice to see you here today. Uh, While we're waiting for Moffat to uh, unmute himself, for those of you who have uh, needs for solutions, can you put your uh, thoughts in the chat? If there's something that you need help with today, put it in the chat and we'll come to the chat and uh, we'll know who, we'll know who needs specific help and uh, Mm. we'll be able to take care of you. Hi, Moffat. How are you? Hello. How are you? Good morning, You're everybody. It's so great. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been away for mm-hmm. three weeks. I've, I've not been at work. I was doing some training for my new job, training. So they gave me three weeks to do it, and I just completed it uh, on Friday. And I'm looking forward to going back to work tomorrow. To, uh, actually, I'm going today. I'm leaving today because I work in Toronto. So I'm leaving today and starting my new job tomorrow. And I didn't realize you had a new job. <laughs> it's because I, I haven't been on the meeting for the past, I think the past two weeks or so. I know. And the other the other week is you were not you were not feeling well, so the meeting was cancelled. And so it's about two weeks, I think, that I missed uh, being with you guys so yeah that's something new in my life because i'm going to start a new job and i'm looking forward to it and so that's something to celebrate uh, and and look forward to otherwise yeah, yeah that's, that's that's where i am well congratulations on your new job and um the three weeks of training that sounds amazing um yeah we i did notice that you hadn't been here and I was actually going to message tomorrow to see how you guys were doing and if there's anything we can do to help. So I'm glad you're here today. Um, It's really nice to hear your pleasant voice over the line here. Thank you. Hmm. Um, No problem. So uh, we'll come back around for solutions and uh, just wanted to just verify that Brian said he's listening while he's working. So he says hi to all. He's uh, apparently he's telling me, don't call on me. I'm not going to talk to you. So, <laughs> uh, Tiffany, how are you doing? Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm doing well in yourself. We're doing amazing. Doing really, we're really excited about uh, all the changes happening around here at, at Kedzie, our business growth. So, yeah, doing great. Thanks. 
Yeah, that's great. I'm glad. I'm so happy to see so much growth and prosperity um, because this month, you know, I think this is the time of period of year that we just reflect on the current months that we had and just kind of evaluate what we can do but did do wrong, you know? So, um, but yeah, for me, um, I got a chance to, you know, I did have a couple of days that I had cleans, but as you all know, um, my helper had left um, due to some mental health challenges. So I was very devastated about that and um, had me to work with our other helper that really is not really, I can't want to say in, in terms of just saying like, she doesn't really clean as well as I would hope to had, you know, think that she would be um, now that the helper is not with us. So I'm not too sure if I want to, you know, keep going with her for right now or take a seat back. But um, it had me some time to really reflect. Um, I connected back with some old contractors and i um, going to get them set up to do some of these cleans that I've already had booked way a long time ago. So that was one thing that I've done this week. Um I also got to attend a couple of networking, um, networking empowerment type of um, business summits this past week, which was really, really great because I don't get to do those. But I feel every time I do go to one of them, it just gives me so much learning and so much um, inspiration to like to grow my business even more and to just connect with other um business owners and entrepreneurs. And this one was dedicatedly dedicated to women of color. So um, just being amongst, you know, other women of color entrepreneurs and owners, it's just really um, delightful to see. And um, it was at one of the colleges here in Massachusetts that known for business owners and entrepreneurship, which is Babson College. It's like one of the mm -hmm. highest colleges here around that you can and to really um, get your degree in entrepreneurship and business. So I was really glad to be amongst that. Um, and then, you know, I didn't really have, like I said, only had like about two or three cleanings this week, but really got to do some things I'm really passionate about, which is networking and doing some things that I kind of do um, besides doing cleaning, which I am a housing advocate and I got to be part of some forums, panels about that, talking about my journey and um, you know, how I got to where I am because I, a lot of people don't know a lot about me, but one thing for sure is that I've definitely had had a, a tremendous journey um, that revolves around homelessness, single motherhood, um, being broke, being down being having mental health having all types of obstacles around my way so it's a privilege to really talk to other people and just get an insight about how I really made it to where I am now you know even though I'm not where I want to be currently I've made so much progress and um I'm happy to to talk about that with people that I've you know been been I've been doing since the day in so yeah that was pretty much my week how inspiration, how inspiration, how inspirational is that? What everything that you just said. I love that you're immersing yourself into this to this other world, that you you recognize that you have a place in the business community and that these are your people. And then, you know, thank you for being so vulnerable to let us know about you know, your homelessness, being a single mom and struggling. Um, you know, we've all, maybe not we've all, many people in this room have been there, including myself. And it's something that I find so inspirational. Is, is, um, it sounds to me that you know that you are worthy of a better life. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, absolutely. And that is so important. That so many people, I mean, many of us, um, 
have come from some really rough uh, up, upbringing background. And, you know, for whatever reason, like there's what I'm starting to understand in my old age is that this goes back to, you know, World War One, World War Two, and some things that happened that have really in the world, not only World War One and World War Two, but that's all I know about, right? Because I'm from Western culture. That's all they teach you in school. But to know that the evolution of the world is the reason that we are where we're at, um, every single one of us with our limitations and our limiting beliefs, it's because of the way that our world to this point has been shaped. That means that when none of us are tied to the issues of past generations, that's not that's not our focus, is not who we are. It's all oh, those are the limits. Um, our previous generation struggles are the limits in our mind, but not our actual true limits. You know, actually we have no limits and we are worthy of everything we desire. Yes, yes. That's what you just brought up in me. Um, you know, when I think about uh, my childhood and some of the, some of the, let's say the excuses that were made for some of the stuff that happened in my life uh, by my, by my own mother who uh, was severely traumatized because of her father's uh, mental instability after serving in the war. Mm. You've just helped me come to this realization that that's all it is. Those, yeah. those limits are defined by a generation that doesn't even exist anymore. Right. right. Yeah. Wow. Definitely. That's amazing. You are quite amazing, uh, Tiffany. I Every time that I see you pop into these Sunday morning meetings, I get, I do feel emotional because I'm so excited to see you and to hear about your progress. Every, every time that I see you or speak to you, you've gone forward in your journey, you know, even through some of the hardest times, like you are overcoming the chains of um, previous generations. And I'm so proud to know you. And I just want to thank you for sharing with us. No problem. Thank you. Thank you so much. I definitely appreciate just having this platform to me amongst other business owners in our industry, you know, because it's, it's far in between, but um, I'm very thankful to have such you guys so smart and having so much knowledge and giving back. So I appreciate it definitely. We're all like minded. Um, you you are also so intelligent in your thoughts and and your focus. It's it's really amazing. It's what I love about it. You know, I'm always preaching to you guys about core values. What I love about it is that all the people that are in this room are great core values fit to each other. We all have the same focus and drive and wants out of our lives. And uh, yeah, this conversation I'm having with you is the absolute epitome of that. To think about how different you and I are, even in the color of our skin. Yet we are exactly the same mindset. You know, we're, we're the same, honestly, the same person living in two different um cultures worlds and and um experiences you know so holy geez you just took me to this like philosophical place i'm sorry <laughs> everybody i'm sorry but that's what i really love about this group and this place you know uh i'll say a little more i know i'm like stealing the show here and too bad for you guys because you don't have as much control over this as me, but I do have something I need to say. I was an outcast my entire life. I was an outcast in school. I was an outcast in every job I had. And that was usually because I was the one that worked the hardest and people didn't like me because I made them look bad. Um, I was an outcast, you know, in my years of addiction and alcoholism, I was an outcast. Um, and then I am here I am in this group of an amazing entrepreneurs, strong, independent, intelligent human beings who are going after their dreams against all odds odds. And in for the first time in my life, I feel like I belong. And mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing to feel that. And not only that, but I feel important. And I hope every one of you does too. 
that this community allows you to feel important because honestly you are. If you're here, you're important. Absolutely. Is that was that okay to say? Sorry. <laughs> you got me. I'm having a philosophical day. It happened in my uh, team meeting earlier as well uh, with my my team. Uh, I don't know. I go with the flow. Whatever the universe tells me to do is what I do. So uh, <laughs> thank you for thank you for that. And I and I really mean it. I am honored to know you and to get to work with you. Same, same. Okay. That was amazing. Uh, okay. I feel good. <laughs> um, I would love to hear from the team here at uh, Kids Our Business Girl. Let's hear your celebrations too. You know, now with the CEO Freedom Program, you guys are not taking as much of a back seat as you used to. So we might as well include you in this group session so that everybody can get to know you a little. So I'll let you decide who's going first. Who would like to give us a celebration for the week? I'm going to pick you then. I'm going to pick Nina. Okay. I was chosen. Thanks for that, Carrie. <laughs> celebration <laughs> the chosen one. For this. Yeah. Celebration for this week. Um, for my personal life, uh, this week was a holiday week for us since we're in the Philippines and uh, it's a holiday for, for my kids, for because uh, it's all souls, all saints and all souls day. So that's November one and November two. Uh we get to have this chance to have um family gatherings and all. Uh and then with work, uh we're so happy. We're so happy about how things are uh going. We have uh onboarded three new virtual assistants and they're all amazing. We have all uh, this org organization with how we deal with our clients' needs. And yep, so we're so happy about it. Yeah, that's a great celebration. <laughs> I'm still celebrating that as well. Uh, yeah, you guys are doing such a great job. I really appreciate having you on the team. Shall we get a celebration from Candace? Uh, for any of you who don't know who Candace is, she is uh, she works in the background. She uh, is our content, um, our social media content guy, Jess. She's his assistant. She's also Peter's mother-in-law. Uh, no, she's Peter's mother. She's my mother. <laughs> And she's she's uh, worked with us over at Cap Cleaners for a long time. And uh, we wanted to steal her away to come with us on our journey, on our uh, Mexico journey. So uh, we hired her here and we had Cap Cleaners lay her off because she was an errand runner there. There's no way for her to be able to run errands from Mexico for them. <laughs> so Candace, have you got a celebration for the week for us? Hi, everybody. I have a two-part celebration I want to do. My first one is the awesome, amazing birthday that you and Peter gave me. Um, it was just unbelievable. It was actually, my birthday was actually yesterday, but Thursday we went out and did a big excursion um, at a resort. It was wonderful. I just loved it. My second celebration is the ability to be able to sit in on this group meeting and put faces to the people that I listen to on the videos and hear their celebrations. It's wonderful. Aww. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're so glad to have you here, Candace. Um, Thank you. We appreciate everything you do. Thank Carol you. was. Happy birthday, Candace. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
that's something that I'd really like to say something about for those owners here. Um, you know, when we're thinking, we're so immersed in what we're doing, right? We're so immersed in building our business, creating financial freedom, we hope, uh, wealth towards the future. The why is so important. The why. Um, Tiffany said, happy birthday, Candice. Um, so mine and Peter's why in life is, um, it's really about our family. Like when people ask me what I want, what I want to do is create personal, financial and emotional freedom for my family. So that's my children, uh, our parents, you know, previously my uncle. What that means is like, I have a grandson this year who was, um, who was uh, diagnosed with autism. My dream is that he will never have to depend on the government to have the things that he needs in order for his emotional development. So if our family can afford to get him the therapy that he needs, rather than my daughter fighting with the government, proving that she needs the help, if we could be financially free enough to be able to get my grandson the help when he need, that he needs when he needs it. Or when, um, let's see, we're talking about uh, fin financial, emotional, and there's also in my family a lot of addictions issues. So we last year we helped my nephew uh by putting him in rehab it was huge it was a ten thousand dollar bill it was funny because i had just finally paid off my credit card like three days before my brother came to me and told me that he needed help with his nephew and so we threw it on the credit card and we're still paying it off in fact we're never going to pay it off i swear to god but the point is that is my mission in life and i'll tell you how this came about with candace it actually has to do with my husband um, my husband, like, uh, the bond between him and his mom is very, very, very obvious. And he, he and his mom, after his father passed away, spent some time together. His mom came and lived with him for a period of time. I'm not sure how long. And then she, uh, met a man, they got married and they spent, and she did her, she did her life. Peter did his life. Well, the opportunity came for Candace to come and stay with us a year and a bit ago, and she did. And when we started, so we hired her in the business so that she wouldn't be tied to having to go to a nine to five job for some retail people who don't understand that when we say, hey, mom, let's take the day off and go do something together, that, that's not a request. Right? <laughs> that's freedom. So we uh, hired her in the cleaning business for that. When we wanted to come to Mexico, personally, myself, and Peter's just hearing this for the first time, really wanted Peter and his mom to have an opportunity to spend some quality time together, just as I had had with my uncle for the last two, day, two years, or for two years during COVID. I considered my uncle to be my father because my uncle stepped in when my father passed away when I was 19. And so my uncle spent two years living with us and it was the best two years for him and I in bonding. Um, and now my uncle is gone. He passed away a few months after he left our home. Um, and I will never forget the experiences I had. I took him to the kangaroo farm. It was the first time in his life he'd ever um, been able to pet a kangaroo, um, which is being able to share something like that with him was amazing because my uncle was well-traveled. He'd kind of done everything, so it was pretty neat. Mostly, we just spent a lot of time talking about the traumas from my childhood, and my uncle and I came to some understandings about why I am the way I am and who I am. My uncle was very proud of me in his final days, um, so the bonding there was so important to me. that I wanted to see that happen for my husband. He seemed to me on, from the outside being a little bit disconnected from his mom. This time that we spent together in Mexico has been a great gift to me because I also have bonded with my mother-in-law in a way that I never would have thought possible. And all because of the freedom that growing my cleaning business gave me. So when I'm talking to you guys about freedom, um, all of the little menial things that we're doing now and all the frustrations that you're having now what I'm doing with you in this program is helping you set the foundation so that you can have this kind of freedom to say, that's it. My, I'm going to Mexico for three months and I'm taking my mom with me, you know? And while we're here, we do one excursion a week if possible. 
we have the freedom to do that. Uh, it's not always easy. I'll have to let you guys know. I mean, it's not that I'm just like, uh, you know, swimming in cash. That's not my life. I am a business owner who's re reinvesting my uh, revenues into growing my business. But I make sure that I have an allowance to spend on excursions every week. Mom pitches in two, don't get me wrong. But uh, I make sure that every week we do one excursion. And that this last excursion was the best because it was a dream for mom. It was a dream come true for her. So, and for us too. I mean, we, <laughs> we benefited from that day. My point is, is that anytime that you're feeling um, disappointed, you're feeling... Uh, um, like you're going against the grain. I'll tell you, Peter and I know about that. It was only three years ago that we were homeless. It was only three years ago that we went from $40,000 a month in revenue to 1900 that we lost our home and we're living on the side of the road in a chicken wire and fenced enclosure so our dogs wouldn't get out. We're using a porta potty, porta potty and relying on the sun to heat our water for our shower. Like we have not spent, <laughs> we have not been, you know, wealthy all our lives and we still aren't wealthy, but we are in a heck of a lot better now than we were three years ago. And we are able to do these wonderful things because that's our focus. So just keep going because there will come a day you may, like, you might think right now that you what you want is a million dollars in the bank. I'll tell you that the most wealth comes for me in days that I spend doing what we did on Thursday with mom. Or in buying, you know what I do every year with my, um, my two of my granddaughters are in Girl Guides. When it's time to buy Girl Guides cookies, I buy a case from each of them. Not a box. I buy a case from each of them. And I'll tell you this, I don't even like Girl Guide cookies. It takes us the whole year to eat them and give them away. The last case, we bought two cases last year. We gave them away at my uncle's memorial service in August. <laughs> like, take these Girl Guide cookies. And then two weeks later, Grandma, we're selling Girl Guide cookies. I'm like, darn, just got rid of the last. That's freedom. My grandchildren are always going to remember that Grandma bought a case every time, right? So I just wanted to take a moment to uh, chime in on your celebration and say, these aren't these aren't things that just happen. These are things that we work towards because that's what's important. If you focus on wanting to give other people things, your success will come. You know, our whole focus in life is to give other people things. And yes, everybody that's in this room, our focus is to give you freedom. The only way that we can give you the freedom that you you desire is to teach you how to go after it. And so that's what that's what we're doing. That's what our motive is with you. And this is the kind of thing that I hope someday you'll be able to do. So, boy, I'm sorry, philosophical. You probably probably weren't expecting this today. I'm sorry. I'm just going with the flow. It seems like that's the uh, modus of the day is philo phil philosophy. So <laughs> thank you, Candice, for sharing. And one more time, happy birthday. We forgot to wish Candice... Yeah. We forgot to wish Candace a happy birthday yesterday. It was like six o'clock and we we're sitting on the couch. Like first I noticed she was all dressed up. She came out of her room all dressed up. Beautiful today. No thought. Then at six, I was like, is it November 4th? Is it your birthday? She's like, yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> what a terrible daughter am I. And I, I was still in my pajamas, guys. I didn't get out of my pajamas yesterday. And then I said to her, do you want to go for supper? And she said, no, we don't have to. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> so we had a really pathetic supper, and but we did spend the day together, and that was lovely. So, it was a good that. dinner. <laughs> no, it was. It's, it's terrible. Well, I enjoyed um, it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I don't <laughs> see how. But if, as long as you enjoyed it, that's all that matters. Uh, can we get a celebration from our dear BJ? BJ might be focused on something else at the time, and he does have a big list of things today. Uh, while we're waiting for that, Peter, we'll get your celebration, and then we can move on to some solutions.
Hello. Good morning, everybody. Um, my celebrations are that yesterday was movie day for us, so it was really cool. It poured rain for most of the day, and it was loud. It was bouncing. It was really cool. Um, didn't mind it at all, actually. And yeah, I all good. All good. Had a good, nice, relaxing day yesterday, so now it's back to work. Let's do it. <laughs> That's the first uh, relaxing day we've had since we came here. We have been either working or running around ever since we got here. Yesterday was the first day we just stated, Mom and I thought about going for a walk in the rain, but then I knew that I would have to like have a shower and get myself together after, and I wasn't interested. <laughs> So solution finding, anybody have any issues that you'd like to discuss today? Um, nobody's put anything in the uh, chat, but any solutions? Uh, let me think if I can think of uh, problems that clients were having. Please just unmute yourself and let me know. Um, problems clients were having this week. You know, it's, it's always the same, um, you know, client acquisition is what we're really working on. Did anybody see the AI uh, spotlight this week? And does anybody have any thoughts about that? I was on the car, though I was driving. And, excuse me. Um, as someone who is quite privy to information because I go searching for it all the time. AI has, be we, I, I, I learned not too long ago that AI has been responsible for a lot of what we see online for a while, but we didn't know what it was. So it basically AI is something that's, um, how would you say it now? been under the covers for a while but it, it has been in existence for a long time however now it's become should i say aggressive should i say more prevalent should i say more available to the average person and so the things that are happening with ai kind of give me i want to say spooky <laughs> a little bit Mm -hmm. But I see where it's, it can be a helper. And there was something the presenter said that I'm a little, how would you say that? I'm not so sure if I share his opinion, but um, there, there could be something there uh, in terms of, he was saying, you know, a lot of us think that uh, AI could be taking over a lot of our jobs, a lot of people's jobs, but then it, he was of the opinion that it could give jobs, which I don't think he is incorrect, but I guess it's a, depending on which generation you're looking at, because some people won't be able to catch up or follow up or be able to take that learning, that kind of a thing, or ex be able to expose themselves to it. Um, from a business perspective, as business owners, it, I see where it can be of a huge, tremendous help for us as CEOs or um, business owners. Um, and going back to the subject of why we, or why, um, one of my whys was to also provide jobs for other people on top of providing for my family and the projects that I have slated out to do for my, you know. So I'm wondering, you know, it's funny because this morning I saw a sweeper that was operating on itself, on its own. Um, I don't know if those of us who are, I'm sure a lot of us have seen the small uh, vacuums that you just turn it on and it goes wherever. We've seen those. And uh, what I saw was the big rider type sweepers and it was driving itself doing the sweeping and it 
And because I, one of the things I'm thinking of, I'm looking into is probably attacking some of these larger enterprises. And I was thinking to myself, when I saw that, I was like, uh oh, you know, it made me think a little bit more. No, sweeping the floor is not the only thing in cleaning. However, you know, that could be somebody's job driving the thing, <laughs> you know. So mm -hmm. AI has caused, a lot of things to turn on its head and I was very happy for the presentation um, I'm not saying I will never use AI I'm probably using it right now and not even know about it mm -hmm. um yeah for it, sure yeah so we should be I think it's an opportunity for us as business owners to learn it take it on um and figure out at least learn it and see if this is something we really want to embark upon because like the presenter said even if we don't learn it somebody else is and whether or not we like it it's 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 here and mm -hmm. ignorance is not going to help us and that's that's my take on it ignorance is not going to help us at all so uh thank you for pre uh, uh, uh having this presentation I'm really happy that we had the exposure to it. And I would encourage those of us who haven't had the chance to watch it, if it's still available for review, um, please take a time to watch it and, and listen keenly to it. Um, um, yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, Jez is working on it now. It should be ready by Monday or Tuesday, I believe. But yeah, you know, I've been thinking a lot about AI because I feel I'm kind of one of those, I think I'm notoriously a fence person. I'm always on the fence. I'm like, well, I can see the good, I can see the bad. I think that's the empathy in me. But what I've come to realize is that with, with every new technology, a new job is born. Um, you what I'm seeing is that so much is required of us for such a little amount of money, right? Like we're required to offer quality assurance, employee training. Um, uh, we're required, like it's not just enough anymore for word of mouth. You've got to do automated emails. And by the way, yes, that's AI. So there you are, you are using AI. Yep, yep. Automated emails, cold calling, social media management, LinkedIn management, like all of these things that we're required to do to get one client. And then, if we have to pay people to do all of those things, imagine if back, you know, back in the stone age, 10 years ago, you had to um, email people. You had to email people yourself. But back then it was before Google would cut you off. So you could just keep emailing people all day long, but you had to pay somebody to do that. And then there was blind car carbon copy and carbon copy. Now we send out 150 emails a day we're actually going to be increasing that to 500 a day soon, uh, 450 a day soon for each of our CEO Freedom people, by the way. Just so you know, if you're in the Freedom program, we are uh, improving our system to be able to send out almost 500 emails every single day on your behalf. So just, just a side note. Um, but with all of these expectations on us on the back end to become amazing service business providers, the focus is not as much anymore on actually doing the cleaning. There's so much more involved that we have to find a way to get that done and we have to find a way to get it done cheaper. Um, there are not enough administrative assistants in our culture. That's why we're using virtual assistants uh, from other, other countries. I think it's really amazing because, well, you know, this could just go so wide. I'll try to rein it in and not say too much here, but now we're creating really amazing sources of income from people in third world countries who are like one of our uh, our appointment center who's no longer with us, but was for a few months, bought his uh, parents a car using our using the money that he made from our program. That's pretty amazing, right? Like he came to his Monday morning celebration freaking out that he bought his parents a car. Amazing. So there's 
my thought is, is that for all of the extra added duties that we have to perform in order to be the best uh, at our job, um, and there's not enough administration, so we have uh, virtual assistants doing that. We can see that there is a there is a need for more quality virtual assistants. Uh, learning, I'm learning myself how to attract great virtual assistants, not just somebody that is willing to show up as somebody that's got the skills and the ambition and the motivation. That AI could take a lot of that away, like a lot of that issue. So uh, appointment setting is one of them. For my online program appointment setting, I've uh, got a bot that is almost ready to go and he'll be, this he'll be, I'm calling the bot he. It will be uh, just talking to people, having conversations with people in my tone. Uh, to get them just to set an appointment, that's going to take some stress off my team and allow us to make more money. So, and then allow me to be able to offer better to my clients. So it's like, I think it's kind of like always kind of revolving that um, I think the more AI takes over, the more we'll be able to focus on the menial task, or not the menial task, but the physical tasks, the sweeping, yeah. Yeah, and just like having a robot vacuum and there's robot lawnmowers now too. We could still use, um, we could still buy these machines and use them and create efficiency so our teams can provide more detailed cleaning in other areas, right? I don't know. I feel both ways <laughs> because now what's it going to do to the, to our price? What's it going to do to our pricing? Now we have to have more clients to fill the, the day, the calendar, more clients to fill the calendar and they're going to expect less because we can do it quicker. Yeah. So um, that was the other aspect of it that I thought about where they're, the clients are demanding more. <laughs> Some of them are never satisfied. And uh, they, a lot of them are not willing to, they, they can't see the costs that build, are built into providing such service. Case in point, that client that I showed to you where they don't want to spend more than a hundred dollars for summer cleans and a hundred fifty for winter cleans, and it's to me that's absurd. And they're not satisfied with their current cleaner, with which whom they are paying that amount. Um, so you know, and we've been having a lot of conversations, but they're not budging, and no, neither am I. So, uh you know. Yeah. Uh, I do know. I do. I, there's one particular client, prospective client that I had, and he, when I quoted him, his, his uh, comeback was the, my fees are lawyer's fees. Your fees are what? Lawyer's L fees. Lawyer's fees. So. Yeah. Which is I, not I just true. basically this said, is, well, I, I I can see that uh, you probably will not be my client. So just... yeah, who's his lawyer? <laughs> Who what what? Where can you find a lawyer for eighty bucks an hour? Lawyers are two hundred fifty five hundred bucks an hour. So undereducated for sure. And what do you say? Arrogant. He's arrogant. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I just left it like that because there was no point of trying to, you know. Bringing up, uh, bringing up lawyer fees, by the way, um, just because you brought it up and it piqued my mind, something that everybody should know about is if you can, you should look into looking at Legal Shield. It's a a membership program for lawyer service uh, that I use for my cleaning business now. It has saved me thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, so what it is, is I think it costs us 54 bucks a month. And what happens is you get a list of things you're allowed, like you're allowed to send uh, demand letters. I think that like demand for payment letters, I think it 
I've never ever used all of my resources. I've never been billed anything above the $54, but I've used them for, to send a letter to a client to let them know that their bill's overdue and that we're going to escalate it. I've used them for advice. And this is the thing that when you need legal advice, you can call them and an actual lawyer will call you back and will advise you on what to do. Then if you need to hire a lawyer, you get 25% off uh, the a uh, recommended lawyer in your area. I've never had to use a lawyer, but they've saved me so much money. So uh, just so you know, uh, last year I had a problem. I had hired a linen service to to supply our, our shirts, our uniform tops and our rags. And that went really bad. It was a terrible service. They did nothing. It was $600 a month. And we actually got nothing from them. And so we canceled with them and they said that we were in a contract for a year um i got one letter was sent from the lawyer and they took us out of the contract and gave us back the 1800 dollars that we had already paid them just from one letter from the lawyer once they knew we had a lawyer involved it was done um then recently we had a dispute with a um with a resort over a large deposit. The deposit was a $13,000 deposit, uh, which they had um, they had quit without notice, which is against the terms of our agreement. And we, we had to go to small claims court and we won in small claims court. Um, out of that 13,000, we have to pay them a 3,800, which was exactly what I was offering to give them back anyway. I was requiring them to uh, pay us for the, um, I was requiring them to pay us for the two weeks notice they were required and I would give them the rest back. They didn't want to do that. We went to court. I didn't take the lawyer, but I got on the phone with one of these legal shield lawyers and uh, got their advice and used their advice. And what I did was I counterclaimed for uh, 30 days notice, which was actually our, our original agreement. And I had when they said that they needed to quit because they decided that they were hiring in-house, which before they had said that they they couldn't find qualified people and in-house was just a nightmare for them. That's why they wanted us. Then they quit without notice, gave us three days notice that they were hiring in-house. Uh, I do believe that they hired one of our ex-employees or two. Anyways, the point is I let them know you're required to give two weeks notice. And uh, well, I said 30 days and then I agreed to two weeks and still they wouldn't pay us. So the point is, is that, you know, from the advice of the lawyer, I had the um, knowledge to be able to go forward with the claim. And the lawyer told me countersuit for 30 days and 30 days was $30,000. So the counterclaim created an opportunity to settle. And that's what we did. Uh, then there's another thing, uh, you know, my son got into some trouble, uh, falsely accused of something fairly certain, fairly, uh, uh, fairly uh, significant. And I phoned the lawyer and they told us exactly what we needed to do in order to uh, move forward. And it became nothing. My son was OK. And uh, the the accuser uh, admitted to the truth. So, you know having a lawyer on has saved us so much money and emotional, emotional uh, overwhelm. And uh, it's worth the $54 a month over and over and over again. You never have problems again. You know, if you need a lawyer, you'll never sit there and wonder, do I need a lawyer? You simply make a phone call. They call you within two hours and discuss the situation and let you know what you should do. So, sorry, I just thought it popped into my mind. I thought everybody should know, um, you just message me if you need to know the name, but the name is Legal Shield, and it's a membership program for lawyers, and it's really good. It's worth every penny. Thank you, Carol, for the discussion about AI. Um, my final thought on the AI discussion is that it's happening. So if you can't at least know it, like learn it, learn how it could affect your business, then you're going to be in trouble. Learn how AI can help your business and learn how it can hurt your business and then make an informed decision about what you need or don't need. But by ignoring it altogether, you're only doing yourself a disservice, for sure.
it has to be acknowledged. Hi, Celia, how are you today? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Good, we are just uh, going through celebrations and solution finding when you, um, and we were just about to end the meeting because nobody seems to need solutions, but now that you're here, maybe you could give us a celebration and maybe there's a solution that you need some help with. Uh, this week is pretty busy, so. <laughs> um, is that your celebration that you had a busy week? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, I could celebrate. I've been busy every day. Yeah, it's been, it's been crazy. And what's uh, is there anything uh, on your anything that happened this week that you could use some help with? Um, uh, not really help with this a celebrate. There is a thing to celebrate. Jordan finally goes to Kelowna and yesterday I went to train her and she's really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's really good. Like I was like clean um, TFC with her and then I was trying to do as less as I can and see how like how she take care of things. I even told her. And then after she down, and then uh, there was like a tiny bit of things left over at the baseboard and at the wall, on the wall. So, and then I just pointed out and then I like, because it just get used to a place. So, and then she was just fixed it immediately. Took another like 15 minutes to taking care of all, or take care of all the offices and turn off the lights. And I told her like how to uh, be logically not to miss anything. And she follows everything. So she's so legit reliable. <laughs> and also we went to ProSmart and saw the owner there and then he was very happy with the, we were training and and he's very happy with our quality after we taking over. And uh, he had a complaint before, but he didn't say anything. So that's something really appreciate. <laughs> but now he's all happy. So thank goodness for that. Okay? Yeah, congratulations. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks goodness for that. Uh, and congratulations. Uh, for any of you wondering, Celia and her husband, Jason, are taking over our cleaning company, Cap Cleaners. And so I try not to say too much because I know everything that's going on there. And I'm trying to treat you like the rest of the clients because you're also a client in the CEO Freedom Program. Um, and you, we have actually haven't had our onboarding call yet. Hopefully it's coming this week. But... I do know about some uh, solutions that you needed this week. Do you, is there anything in particular you'd like to talk about? Can you let me know? Probably there's too many things to pop up. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I have so many solutions. I don't know which one to pick. Um, you know, I think that we should talk about uh, the one client that got $4,000 behind on our bill. Uh. Don't say her name, but what, what happened, I'm just going to give some context here. What happened is that one of our clients, uh, she has actually a pretty bad accountant and she was with us back oh. in the day when we, when we had a administrative assistant that uh, wasn't, wasn't following any of our procedures. That's the administrative assistant that cost us like $40,000 in three months. Oh, that was a rough uh, spell. Um, she did not follow any of our procedures, which is um, to create, to require a deposit. Um, this client has an accountant that doesn't really take care of things. And it's funny because Elizabeth was talking about this earlier. This client, this accountant doesn't take care of things. And so we have to follow up with the accountant continuously to get their bills paid. And uh, in the changeover from me to you or from us to you guys her account went unnoticed to the tune of four thousand dollars and so in the last week we noticed that her account is behind four thousand dollars and uh, so uh we started we started following up with her she has paid two thousand dollars of the four thousand but she's still two thousand behind and so what we're going to be doing this week 
is creating a policy with this client. We're going to get her account paid up and then we're going to uh, come forward and have a blunt conversation with her that she needs to have a deposit on file um, and that if her account goes unpaid, we will not be returning. Like, well, the, the rule for deposits really is they have to have one payment cycle on file. So for our commercial clients, they're required to have one month deposit on file. For our vacation rental clients, it's usually one visit. And for residential, it's usually one visit. But she seems to like to pay monthly. So what, what we'll be talking about in our meeting this week is um, telling her her monthly bill is about $1,000, that she must give us a $1,000 deposit. And if we get to the $1,000 threshold and she hasn't paid her bill, then we won't be able to return until she has. And this will give us back the control. Like in this moment, we did actually, we, we realized last week, Thursday, that she was 4,000 behind. And we had a team going Tuesday. We sent the team because if we halt services when a client is $4,000 behind, we're now risking that they're going to see that as a reason to not pay us. So the idea is that the deposit uh, takes away the hostage negotiations. <laughs> we are no longer hostage to them. And so we're going to have to correct that and not allow that to happen anymore. But the reason I bring it up here is so that everybody can see this can get out of control when a client, uh, we, this is a weekly client and it's about 300 bucks a week to go there uh, when we're doing both properties. And it's only in four weeks that it gets behind by 1200, 4,000 is only three months behind. Um, when I say only, you know, time goes fast when you're running a large corporation and it's easy to miss uh, if a client's behind, especially when you're looking the other way. And I was looking the other way because I was focusing on training Celia and Jason on the daily operations um, that I wasn't paying attention to the receivables. I was paying attention to commercial receivables, but not residential receivables. So Celia, our, this client snuck in there because our, our average client is around $3,000 a month in, well, our average client uh, receivables is about $3,000. And so when, when this client was sneaking up there in her second month, she was getting close to 3,000 behind. She just sort of blended in with all the other receivables. And then after another six weeks, that's when I realized, hey, she's 4,000 behind because she's not blending in anymore. Now she's above, her bill is above all the other receivables. So that's how it came to light. But so some lessons here to learn are be careful when you're looking the other way, the thing that you're not looking at could get away from you. And also to be very uh, true to your procedures. We never have any problems with overdue accounts for the, for the clients who have deposits on file. It is never a problem. We only have problems with overdue accounts for clients who don't have deposits on file. Every time. If somebody doesn't have a problem with deposit on file, it seems to be they're the problem, they're the issue. So that's probably because clients who refuse to put deposits on file are the type of clients who either don't have the disposable income or don't see us as a priority. And this client doesn't see us as a priority. She has the income. She can she can pay the bill. She just doesn't see us as a priority. Um, and so we have to make her understand we are a priority. So anybody here who's not charging deposits or wants to understand um, this is, I think, the only client we have without a deposit on file. Do you think that's Um, if yeah, and I think so. There is not many people that doesn't have any. Well, deposits are deposits are attainable, and they really, really create um, a good flow of your revenues. No more waiting on invoices, and. The reason this client is a problem is because she's one of the ones that falls into the, I don't want to pay a deposit um, cycle. And actually, if I remember correctly, what she said was, if I have my credit card on file, can I not pay a deposit? And we said, yes. So she had a credit card on file. And then after a month or two, she took a credit card off file. So that's how she got kind of around it. And it never got, I need help with requiring deposits. Awesome. Um, tell me, 
What do you need help with specifically? Elizabeth just said in the chat, she needs help with you. Yes, Carol, go ahead. So in the case where someone, um, I'm glad we're having this conversation because I kind of struggle in that area as well. Um, so in the case where a client removed their credit card from the file, do we catch that immediately? Is that a, is is there an alert that you would? I'm not sure what CRM you're using, but does that pop back, pop out at you? And are you able to just say to the, hey, I noticed you removed your credit card from file, which is a con uh, against the agreement. So we're gonna pause service until you either pay the deposit or you return the card on file. And my fear about that is coming from the fact that I work in hotels and I know how that works. Sometimes they will give you a credit card to guarantee. And then when you try to charge the card, it's either insufficient funds or there's no, the card is closed, but it's sitting there. How do you protect yes. yourself from scenarios like those? Everything you just said, yes. Uh, we use Jobber and Jobber does alert you when they take their credit card off file. Okay. And then you can require, my thing is, is that credit card on file or not, they must pay a deposit. I To me, it doesn't matter. Um, so we don't require every client to have their credit card on file. We do require them to pay a deposit. So if uh, they stop paying, then we can apply the deposit and stop going. Um, but Jobber does send a message letting you know when a client takes a credit card off file. And then, of course, when you're doing your invoicing, you'll see it if it gets declined and that's when you should deal with it immediately. But if you already have the required deposit on file, that first time the invoice is insufficient or the credit card isn't right, is not going to affect you. It's if you let it go further the next month, right? So that's when you say, oh, if I don't receive a credit card on file and payment for this invoice by this date, we will not be able to return. And most people are feel a little insecure about that, about saying we can't return if you don't put the credit card on file. The truth of the matter is, is if this client can't afford to pay you, you'd rather know now than when they owe you $5,000. You no. Know? So that's the idea of it. So yeah, the problem was we had a terrible office administrator. I should really clarify. I don't believe it was her fault. She had had a stroke a year and a half before she started working with us. And I believe that she was suffering from some dementia related issues. I don't think that she's a terrible person, but her skills were not, not uh, efficient. And on top of it, she didn't want to tell anybody she was making the mistakes she was, so she was hiding them. And this is from one of those things where she hadn't followed the procedure and then she just didn't let us know. And then we didn't notice it until it was $4,000 per day. So that's something else, you know, if you're very hypersensitive to your procedures and making sure people are following them, then you will be able to catch on when something somebody has something happen that's going to cause them to kind of derail, right? Uh, we have, we have specific procedures for everything we do in our cleaning business and in our online program. And when I notice that my employees aren't doing those procedures, then I know that there's something wrong. If it's an employee who has been like really amazing for two years and then suddenly isn't following procedures, either they're getting ready to go somewhere else and they don't care about their job anymore or something in their personal life is affecting them or maybe there's a health concern coming up. Uh, so you know, if you have the procedures in place, it gives you an opportunity to notice when people are, are struggling. If you have no procedures in place and you're just depending on people to do the right thing, you have no gauge as to where the struggle is. The systems and procedures are very, very important, um, including your employee attraction systems and procedures. Um, it happened to us that we had lost a $750 a week client. Was that right? Or was it a month? It might've been a month. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was a month, $750 a month client we lost. 
because one of our employees didn't wear shoes on their property. So they messaged us and said that they didn't appreciate that the employee didn't wear their shoes and was wandering around in their sweaty sock socks. I don't know what that meant, whether the person had wet feet. If they were cleaning a bathroom, their feet probably got wet and then they were leaving wet footprints and the client assumed it was sweat, probably. Our procedure is that our employees must change into indoor shoes at every residence or vacation rental property. When this employee, when I went and talked to the employee, who's a really great employee, um, who's like our best, he said that in his orientation, the lady who had orientated him had uh, told him that he was, if, if he didn't uh, have indoor shoes, he could just go in his stocking feet, which is against our rules, against our procedures for uh, against work safe rules and against our uh, quality rules. But we didn't find out until this employee had been with us six months that they didn't know about our shoe. So the first thing was we went and checked and we found that it is on our new employee orientation job form. So we went back and said, it's specifically on your first day orientation job form. And he said, she didn't use the job form and she didn't tell them about the job form the new employee in orientation day one. So then back to that employee's not following the procedure. Then uh, we checked all of our job forms and found that it is not on any job form anywhere. It wasn't in our policies and procedures. Have, um, our manual and it had been overlooked in every other area. So of course we fixed that because $750 times 12 months is like a $9,000 client that we lost because one employee gave false information and we didn't have it anywhere else for accountability sake. The second problem was with that this employee, this employee and his wife are a team that work for us and they are absolutely phenomenal. So um, we gave them their three month raise early and we didn't give, and then when we gave them their raise early, my HR manager thought that meant that I had given them a review and I hadn't, and it was up to her to give reviews at three months and she didn't. And so we never had a three month review with them. And I feel that we might have found out about this problem with the orientation onboarding if we had had the proper three month review. So that's how having procedures that aren't being followed can create ripple effects that cost us $9,000. So have uh, procedures and insist that they be followed and don't let them fall back on. Things like uh, team meetings, team events, things like that are things that are promised to my employees, our employees in the, uh, when they're hired. If those aren't being followed, if you're, uh, if you, I'm sorry, Celia, I'm outing you here. If you should have had a team event and Cap Cleaner should have had a team event before the end of October and you haven't, your employees are feeling let down. Um, you pro we promise our employees that they will have an event in October and in March, and they're expecting that. So when you start going against your own procedures, now your employees figure that they don't have to go against, they don't have to go with your procedures and the whole thing falls apart, right? If you're not keeping your promises, why should they keep theirs? So it's really important to create procedures, follow procedures, and then watch for them to be overlooked or missed so that you can bring everybody back together. Or you're going to start losing $9,000 a year clients over and over and over again. In the last three months, Cap Cleaners has lost about $30,000 a year in clients because of procedures not being followed. Uh, some of those procedures not being followed are my fault because I'm looking somewhere else. And some of it is just what happens when you have new people taking over. So you guys will get there one day that you hire managers for your cleaning business or, you, um, or you're or you switching hands and to let you know that you will lose clients because of that. And that is because procedures get missed. It's just a part of the game. So anybody here who doesn't have procedures for onboarding and for quality assurance, um, please bring that up in our meetings together because we really need to have those. If you don't have a policies and procedures mod, mod 
If you don't have a policies and procedures manual yet, and you've been with me more than uh, four weeks, there's a problem, it should be done. If you're in the CEO master plan, it is your responsibility to make sure it gets done and to let me know that you don't have it. So please, let's uh, let's make November Systems and Procedures Month. Let's make sure you all have your systems and procedures together. If you don't have employees yet or you only have one or two, now's the perfect time to get these procedures going so that when you do have 20 or 30 employees, it's already set in stone and you already understand it. How does that feel? That all came from requiring deposits. See how uh, one question can create such deeper thinking? That's why they call it a mastermind because one person's issue can create understanding of so much more. So, Celia, you and Jason are doing a fantastic job. These problems that I'm bringing up here, not to pick on you, but to let others know that it's not always perfect. And sometimes things uh, go, go wrong or go astray, but all you have to do is learn from it and improve and it will be, and you'll be good. You have to, you have to make mistakes in order to learn. That's my hint to you to get your team event organized, by the way. <laughs> I've been patiently waiting. I brought up the team event uh, for four uh, staff meetings in a row. And um, the last time I brought it up was at the uh, beginning, The I think it was around the 5th of September and there still hasn't been a team event. It's November 5th. It was the 5th of October and there hasn't been a team event and it should have happened before. Halloween. So I'll let you know um, that if you haven't had your team event yet, your employees are wondering why not, and they're starting to feel let down. I, I promise you that they are feeling uncared for. So, guys, when you make when you make uh, promises to your employees, including in when you hire them, you must follow through on your promises. If you aren't following through on your promises, how are your employees supposed to uh, reciprocate? What you're telling them is promises mean nothing. We'll do what we can. We'll see how it goes. If you want a team that is a we'll see how it goes team, you're not going to have a very strong culture. You're not going to have a very strong quality assurance program, and you're going to lose clients. Any other solutions for today? I uh, just would like to share something. Um, for those of us who are on LinkedIn, they're offering free courses on marketing. If anyone would like to profit from that, I mean, we might have, um, depending on what we're doing, we all, some of us might have that experience and whatever, but, you know, if it's something you're interested yeah. in, it's, it's a good idea. I actually... Just... I actually saw that come across my uh, email just yesterday as well. And I thought, I'm thinking that I should have my team go to that. Yeah, that would be great. I'm hoping I'll be able to do it. Some of the classes are like 45 minutes, an hour, uh, two minutes. They have different integrals of different okay. sessions. So, Thank I'm... you for bringing it up. I'm got... Go ahead. I'm definitely going to look into it and everybody should. What else were you going to say? No, I was going to say that I'm hoping to also do it. I just hope that I will be able to schedule schedule myself to participate. Yeah, uh, Nina, can you please look in, look at, look into the LinkedIn free training and see if we can have our teams, uh, at least two or three people on our team attend. Um, one of them should be we should have uh, Hannah attend. I'd like to attend myself. And uh, maybe you as well. Nina, Hannah, and me. And Peter. Peter should know everything. Okay. Got it. Thanks, Nina. Thanks for bringing it up, Carol. I did see it yesterday, and I did think, right. wow, that's awesome. But I was focused on the challenge that we have coming up this week that I should tell you all about. So the challenge is, it's a workshop. It's going from Tuesday to Saturday, and it's going to be in the evenings, 6 till 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
It may run later, but uh, for sure it's going to run for those three hours each evening this week. So in Pacific Standard Time, that's three till six p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you're on the uh, if you're on the West Coast, uh, you may have to you know make time for it or have it running while you're still at work. Whatever you have to do. This uh, these challenges and workshops that I present are free for you. If you're in one of our programs, it is free for you. Now, you may think I already am in Carrie's program, so there's nothing I need to learn here. I just wanna let you know that's not true. <laughs> because just like these masterminds, you never know what's gonna come up that you didn't realize or you didn't know, or what was talked about when you first started the program that you've forgotten about or, or has gone to the wayside. So these challenges and workshops, whenever there's something free, if you can get to it, you should. And especially when it's in my program, because it's going to be a refresher for you, if not new learning. And I do try to bring new learning so that all of you will benefit in other ways rather than just a refresher. There's a lot of new learning going on in this program. So um, I'd love to see you there. Please try to make time to show up for it. Uh, if you can, if, if you can't make every day, that's fine, but try to get there because it's going to help you improve your business. So anybody who's struggling should definitely be showing up to the, to this challenge. Um, you'll be, the, the Zoom link is going to be provided inside of the Facebook group and the Slack channel. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if I'm able to get reminders out to you guys. Um, it's sort of like there's a lot of stuff going on right now. I was trying to have automated reminders for you, but I we will remind you inside of the uh, groups for sure, even if we just have to go in there and do a, a at everyone post. You should come if you can. Uh, the first day is kind of an introduction um, and uh, you know core values, pricing for profit, and uh, I can't remember what else, but there's some new learning there. The second day, you say Wednesday, uh, Wednesday is all about social media marketing, LinkedIn, uh, automated emails, all of that stuff. Um, and again, there's always some free con or new content in there, fresh content. So um, it wouldn't hurt uh, for anybody who doesn't understand how to use the content calendar um, I provided you all with a content calendar, but many of you are not using it. Um, if you want to learn how to use a content calendar, this is the one for you. Uh, Thursday, bookkeeping with Erica. She's giving away uh, free. She's doing uh, in-depth uh, bookkeeping, like kind of like a mini workshop, but she's going to teach you what the do's and don'ts, what you should know and what you shouldn't ignore. Uh, and she's giving away free analysis to everybody who's there that day. So you have to be in the workshop that day to get the free analysis. It's like a $500 thing. It's an in-depth thing. It's not just a, your books look good or they look gross. It's a, let's get this all organized and sorted out for you analysis. Uh, Friday is kind of, a, it's kind of an implementation day where I'll be kind of collecting what the struggles are of the week. And in Friday, we're going to be talking about the things I find out people need during the course of the week, I'm going to discuss on Friday. Saturday will be Jamari with uh, ChatGPT, uh, Google and Facebook ads. And uh, Friday will, will be uh, the day that I'm letting our clients know about the CEO Freedom Program. So I'll be kind of pitching that to the people in there. If any of you that are in the CEO Freedom Program now want to talk about your experience, although it's been limited so far, uh, if you have, I prefer positive things, but negative things help us learn as well. <laughs> but honestly, if there's negative things, could we just talk about that um, not in the public forum? Because what we're trying to do is um, create knowledge of the CEO Freedom Program to grow the program so that we can all benefit from it. So. Um, the more people we have in the program, the more things that I can invest in to make the program better, right? Creating a, creating a program that works for everyone. So uh, if you know of any cleaning businesses that would benefit, it doesn't actually only have to be cleaning businesses. We are 
eventually going to be able to service any service industry business, uh, whether it be lawn care, lawn care, window washing, pressure washing, uh, car detailing, those types of service industries will be able to serve those clients eventually. So we're not going out and uh, promoting or marketing to that, but if you know somebody in those sectors, um, we would love to have them in the uh, we would love to have them in the program so that we can start creating strategies for those clients. So if you uh, invite somebody to come to this uh, workshop and they end up signing up for one of our one of our program programs, we have five programs that start at fifteen hundred dollars and go all the way up to thirty one thousand dollars. You will uh, be uh, rewarded with 10% of their uh, revenues and commissions. So if you get somebody into the $31,000 program, uh, you refer them to the $31,000 program and they decide to sign up, that's 3,100 bucks for you. Um, so if you're in uh, cleaning business groups and you see somebody who could benefit, go ahead and let them know that this is happening on, it starts on Tuesday. Uh, I do believe I provided the link in the Facebook group, but uh, if you need that, of course, you can always just message us and we'll get it to you. So any questions about the challenge? Nothing? Anybody gonna, anybody planning on coming to the challenge? Maybe raise your virtual hand. I have a question hand. about it. Yes, So Elizabeth. if we sign up for it, like, will because what my problem is a lot of times is that I'm in between properties and where I live, I lose service and stuff. So will it be something that like, as I'm driving, if I lose service, I can log back into it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we're okay. going to provide you with the Zoom. We'll provide you with the Zoom link because uh, you, you're coming free. So to, anybody here, don't go and sign up through the link. Just watch the Facebook group or the Zoom uh, link. We'll be providing you the Zoom link. You come free of charge. You can come and go as you like. Yeah, so if you get kicked out, you just come back into the Zoom meeting. Yeah, and don't pay. Don't go on the link and pay. It's it's costs people to come into the, um, to the challenge, $147 to get into the challenge, but you guys get in free. Also, they have to pay to upgrade to VIP. You are automatically VIP members, so you don't have to pay for that either. That was a great question. Come as often as you can, be there as long as you can, and you will increase your revenues. All right, if there are no more questions, then I am going to uh, close out the session and get ready for, oh, one more, one more thing. Two things I need to know. Would it be helpful to have this meeting later in the day on Sundays? Or do you guys like the time? I'm asking you because you're here. And I just really need a specific answer. If you could just say in the chat, either later or now is fine, that would really help me. And by later, I'm thinking two o'clock PM, Eastern Standard Time? No, yes. Now is fine, later, at two. Still waiting here from a couple of you. I know that some people are missing their church for this and that's kind of a problem, but then some people might not be able to be done church in time for this. So uh, I really need to know your opinion before I make any changes or decide to leave it. Then second question, while you guys are uh, formulating your answer for me, is uh, we're having a second meeting. Uh, now it's fine, if you don't mind being late at times. Yeah, I don't mind if you guys come in late at times. Flex gold either. Okay, great. We are thinking about having a second meeting uh, a little later. Well, I can't decide if it should be early or late during the week. So Thursday, I was thinking we should have a second meeting on Thursday or Wednesday. Does anybody have any input or thoughts on that? I think maybe Wednesday. Wednesday seems to be a slow day for everybody. If I were to make a Wednesday call at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 
Is there anybody that would think that would be a bad time? Hi, Misha's husband. Nice to meet you. <laughs> the weekdays are great and flexible. So does anybody have an opinion about um, whether it should be Wednesday or Thursday? If we do Wednesday, it would be right before the spotlight, right? Yes. I think so. What I'm wondering is, is one Eastern time, you see the reason what I'm trying to do is make it a little more accessible for uh, Pacific time people. Because for Pacific Standard Time, this is really early on the day on a Sunday. And that's why some members aren't here. They're like, Sunday's my only day to sleep in and I am and I need the rest. Mm -hmm. So now I'm wanting to move it to a weekday for them. And then if I say 1 p.m., that is 12, 10, 9, 9. 10. 10. 10. Why don't I say noon on Wednesdays and then that's 9 a.m. for Pacific? Noon Eastern. Does, does that seem bad or wrong? Is this so hard? Yeah, we're gonna say one because uh, Jamie's uh, call is on Tuesdays at one. Weekdays are great. It would be bad time for making. We do one p.m. Eastern time on Sundays. Carol, that's two for later. Elizabeth says no is fine. Tiffany says I'm flexible. Uh, Elizabeth, would one o'clock on Sundays be an imposition for you? No, not at all. Awesome. So I think that we will move the Sunday call to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we'll also have a second call 1 p.m. Wednesday Eastern Standard Time. And we'll hope that's going to work out fine for everyone. I had some uh, Pacific Standard Time people ask me for evenings, and I'm just going to be honest. I work, I start at 6 a.m., and by 6 p.m., I am exhausted, and I'm hungry, and I'm feeling disheveled, and I'm just no good. So I won't be performing evening calls. However, this is the CEO program. CEOs do meetings. So um, I think that by allowing a the Pacific Standard Time, uh, 9 a.m. on a Wednesday morning, I think should be hopefully doable. I don't want you to think that I'm not thoughtful to your concerns and your needs, but there are times when you have to decide to put your business first. And by putting your business first, that means you've got to make decisions in order to be able to create growth. These mastermind calls do create growth. Even if you think they're kind of hokey, we also did cover a lot of ground today. Um, and it opens up your thinking. So mastermind calls are so very important and I'm going to go out of my way to make them more accessible to you. I just can't please 50 people. I can't make it accessible for 50 people. I will have the 1 p.m. on Sundays and the 1 p.m. on Wednesdays. I'm going to say now that that's our new program. There's the replays. And you also all have one-on-one -on -one calls with me. So, but I do want to point out that the people that show up here weekly to this call are the most successful people in our program. So if you're uh, wondering why you're not successful or why you're not seeing change and growth, it's because you're not showing up. Uh, the same people that don't show up to the masterminds are the same people that are not create, not making time to come to one-on-one -on -one calls. And I'll let you know those people are struggling the most. So... If you're somebody who's struggling and you are blaming our program, I want you to think twice. Um, you, It is not our program's fault if you are not showing up. It's just like marriage. You can't not show up to a marriage and expect it to work. You can't not show up to a partnership and expect it to work. Um, anybody who knows me knows I'll, I'll, I will definitely match your excitement and your, um, I'll bet your excitement and your pro your commitment to this program. But if you're not showing up, you're not setting your, you're not giving yourself, making appointments with me for yourself. If you're canceling, not showing up, that's on you. 
If you want your business to stay where it is, that is exactly how it will work. If your goal is to stay where you are, then continue to not show up to meetings, continue to not book meetings, continue to cancel at the last minute, and you will stay where you are. If you want to grow and learn, start showing up to meetings, start booking one-on-one -on -one calls, and make this your priority. That's the best advice I can give you. And it's not because I'm upset, because it's not on me. I give you guys everything I can. I'm there for you. It's not on me. If you're not finding the success that you want, if you haven't been to a mastermind call in a month and you're not finding the success, that's why. So that's honestly, that's a you thing. So I'm saying this for the people that are watching the replay, by the way. Everybody that's in this call today, thank you for being here. You are, you are consistent, you're showing up, and you're working with me to grow your business. And I really appreciate that. And I really care about you. And I'm really excited to see you here. So 1 p.m. on Sundays, 1 p.m. on Wednesdays, and anybody making excuses that they can't make the meetings, that is no longer um, an opportunity for you. I have made it accessible for everybody now. Is that good? Everybody good to go? Carol. Of course, Carol. Question. The sun, the, for those who make the Sunday meeting, is it also, it will it also be the same thing that's being repeated on the Wednesday meeting? Thursday meeting, sorry. These, meet, these meetings are not scripted, so it will be different every time. So okay. it's it's always different depending on who shows up, right? Uh, so, and what solutions they're looking for. So every, every mastermind call is really important. Uh, what I'm going to let you guys know right now is if I see that uh, more people are showing up to Wednesday, if I start having people not showing up on Sundays, then I'll probably cancel the Sunday call. And that's okay with me. But as long as there's people showing up to both, then both will, will run. But I'm not going to give up two, two to three hours of Sunday if nobody wants to come. We could we could use that time more productively. I think that we're going to have um, lots of people in both. And everybody is invited to both or one. or I mean, coming to none is your choice. I just don't think that it's very helpful. Did that answer? Yeah, thanks. Carol's like, I work. She, Carol has still has a job. And what she... What she wants is to not miss the Wednesday call. I already know that about her. So she's like, damn, now I'm going to be missing out. I promise yeah. you, you will have, have the replay. Yeah, I have meetings on during the week at one. So You guys know that it, that's what that Facebook group's for, right? If we get together in a mastermind and there's something that you want to talk more, out, more about, you can put it into the... Um, into the Facebook chat, you say, hey, this happened in the meeting today. I'm just wondering, you know, can we talk more about that? Or if you see a replay and you want to talk more about it, hey, I noticed that you guys talked about commitment in the Sunday meeting. Can we talk more about that? We'll talk about it. In fact, maybe I should start creating that kind of content for our Facebook group. So reach out if you want to talk about anything you see in a replay. Anything you see anywhere that you are curious about or want more information, I'm always open to it. So the stuff that we learn here is not for only here. It's to open up your mind to these concepts and ideas. So let's talk about it. Anything, anytime is open for me to talk to you about. There are no boundaries. That's what I'm here for. You have to take as, get as much as you can in our time together from me. Send it in the Slack. Send a message in Slack. Send it in Facebook. Ask me questions. I love answering questions. And it's not limited to the time that we're together. There's many, many ways for you to ask questions and go for it. If, you, if you're feeling like you shouldn't, that is exactly opposite of what I want for this program. Yes, uh, Tiffany has her hand raised. Yes, I, I just remembered that I was, um, a week I got approached on my LinkedIn. Um, a lot of like, because I'm, involved in a lot of community service agencies and such well um a gentleman had reached out to me i guess they um they are like a shelter 
and um, they do a lot of, um, I don't know how to describe it, but more or less, like, they help, like, people that, you know, have gotten, have records, got out of jail, or just, like, homeless and needing job placements. Job placement, that's pretty much what it is. Um, well, like, fellow had reached out to me and knows that I'm a business owner for a cleaning company, and um, wanted to uh, discuss about, like, job opportunities that I can give to the people that are in training. So I guess I'm not really too sure because I haven't really talked to him yet, but one would probably be like, I guess he's asking like, will we implement like a housekeeping training type of thing? Like how do I go about doing something like that? And I guess also um, like cleaning positions for those that are like, can't, get a job elsewhere how do I like my company benefit for something like that I'm not too sure if I would have like I would have to have like a private call with you to talk about this personally but I just wanted to kind of hear from other people's perspective about like how I can reap this benefit that this person is like throwing my way yes does anybody in the does anybody here uh have some advice for Tiffany I'm going to give you my advice until they start speaking up. Um, Nina, can you please let Nicholas know we'll be just, I'll be a few minutes late. Uh, just let him know that we're in a hot. Oh, we still have time. Ignore that. The time changes me. I all screwed up. Okay. This is amazing, uh, Tiffany. This is what I, um, what I do with my, or what I used to do with my cleaning business. There are some concerns, some considerations. Um, the first thing to know is that um, these employees will have obstacles. Their obstacles will be sometimes emotional, sometimes mental, sometimes skills related. Um, and if they have been in prison, there's that aspect, right? What were they in prison for? Now, I've hired people that have come out of prison. Um, my big thing is, is that I don't want to see that they were in prison for theft or larceny or whatever however you say there uh but then you know i had hired somebody who had been in prison for assault uh 20 years prior and um then what had ended up happening was this person actually was a bully and we had to deal with bullying and harassment with them so that became more of a he he had said that he was re uh rehabilitated but he still had the same kind of triggers and the same um, personality traits. So that became an issue for me. So I think that there would have to be a lot of in-depth um, um, in interviewing so that you understand who you're bringing on your team and what their issues might be, like so you can... Uh, foresee any issues. If somebody uh, was in jail for assault, then they might be a bully. Or if somebody was in jail for theft, then they might be a thief. Um, yeah, great. Uh, Elizabeth is going to chime in. Just give me a couple seconds here. Um, then I would work specifically with the program facilitator and see if they can give you any training on how to work with and manage these people, whether it's whether it's um, giving you some resources that you can go and find your own training or if they have any policies or procedures in place, um, I would then call my insurance provider, uh, liability insurance, and just tell them what I'm thinking about doing and asking if there's any, uh, any issues with um, policies and procedures. The next thing to think about is make sure that you understand what you're promising your clients. So I promise my clients that all of my employees will be required to submit to a criminal record check. That's specifically what it says. My employees are required to submit to a criminal record check. I do not require my employees to not have a criminal record. I require them to submit to a criminal record check. And then I make my decision based on that. If they were 10 years old and they stole a chocolate milk, I'm probably not going to be 
uh, too worried now, right? But if last year they robbed a bank at gunpoint, that might be an issue for me, right? Um, so understand what your liability insurance uh, covers and how you're talking to your clients. I would never send uh, an employee with a criminal record or an addictions issue. So somebody who's in recovery and has been in recovery less than a year, I would never send them anywhere alone. I would always have them work with a partner. Um, at least until they've hit their six month um, review. Because people in recovery, people in re in, like coming out of rehabilitation are, they really have their mind set right. They're excited about their new life and they really do want to do better. And they probably have some tools and some skills, if they're coming to you through a program, they probably have that stuff already in place. But what you really need to know is what's gonna happen when things go wrong. So in the first year in recovery, it's the hardest year because the triggers are, the triggers may lead you to make decisions that lead you down the wrong path, right? Uh, and you don't know your triggers yet, you're still learning your triggers. So you can be triggered by a smell, by a sight, by a thought, by a person. Um, and while those people are working through those things, you really want to not um, put them in situations that they may relapse or, or go backwards. This is important mm -hmm. for me to tell you, because I did hire a lady that was in recovery. She was amazing. She was three months into recovery and she was focused on just changing her life. I gave her, uh, I, I just said, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you change your life. And I gave her a car. I gave her um, a pretty good uh, salary and I made her a manager all within the first month of working with me. I gave her all the tools that she needed to have a really nice relapse. She could afford the drugs. She had the car to go get them. She had uh, her whole family wasn't paying attention anymore because she had turned her life around. She got this amazing job. And so nobody was paying attention to her uh, in that aspect because they, they all thought she was healed because everything was going so well for her when really she was she was just waiting to relapse, right? And I gave her all the tools for that. And I've always kind of kicked myself for not realizing that, that if you give somebody too much in the beginning of um, their recovery journey, and I think it's the same whether they're recovering from being in jail, recovering from domestic violence, recovering from addictions, if you give them too much at first, it could be their road back to whatever their issue was. Those are all the things that I think about. I still, well, you know, I don't have the cleaning business anymore. And for Celia and Jason, I would I would give them the same advice, be very cautious and in this way. But when I was running the cleaning business, I was very comfortable by the time I left with hiring people in recovery and just out of jail. But I did have some specific, um, procedures and policies. And I was working with a place called WorkBC. I was working with an agency that helps people get back on their feet. And so they provided us with um, the training and the skills we needed. We talked to them every week about the progress. So if you have everything in place, I love the idea of doing this. Okay. I think everybody, I think everybody in this room can agree. We've all had our hard times and you know, having somebody that understands that and helps us helps pick you up could be the change the change you need in your life. Right. Hey, there. Hey. Um. Yeah. This is Jamie. Jamie, this is Jamie. Jamie, can you just hold on? Because Elizabeth did say she had something to say, oh. so we'll get her. We'll get her comment, and then we'll come to you. Yeah. Go for it, Elizabeth. Thanks, Jamie. Um, I actually have like worked with people that are in recovery, and also from personal experience of being in the system and then trying to return to, because if somebody has been in prison, like they know, they aren't used to having lots and lots of freedom because um, they're told when they can go to bed, when they can go watch TV, when they can go to rec, like all of that. And your biggest thing is going to be, if you do a background check, it needs to probably be more federal than just local because like where I'm located, I'm in a tri-state area. So people could go 15 minutes down the road and they could get in trouble in that state and it would not show up on my background check. 
So I have to do federal background checks. And the other thing is, is that we work with a lot of women that are trying to like, they're leaving like domestic violence or they're in recovery or a drug addiction or alcohol or anything like that. And accountability is like the biggest thing. And what I've found is like, if you put them in more commercial style than residential style cleaning, just to see how they start going back into the workforce and when they're being met with opportunity. Because if they're coming, especially out of a system where they've been in a program where it's been really structured, then they haven't had those opportunities of freedom to start making good or bad choices. If that makes any sense. I mean, that's amazing. That is so helpful. Yes. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Now, Jamie. Hey. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to uh, suggest that um, as far as, um, you know, people coming uh, out of the system, uh, prison and, and specifically, I would check their institutional record um because obviously you know they they done something to get in there but and, and we know that right but what we want to see is what they've done since you know initially being incarcerated you know what i mean some people they go in there and they clean up you know, others, it's just like high school, you know, a continuation of whatever they were doing on the street. So I would, if, if you could somehow tap into reentry programs, um, the state, they're usually um, open, you know, to uh, working with um, companies and so forth as it pertains to, you know, uh, giving uh, ex-inmates work. So you shouldn't have too much red tape as far as that. But, yeah, I would suggest looking at the institutional record, you know, what they did while they were in there. You know, now, if they did a long time um, and the ages and everything is a part of, the equation, but if they did a long time, obviously they went in when they were young. The first couple of years, like the institutional record is going to be crazy, probably right. But you you should be able to see that progression of uh, maturity, you know, in their record, you know, um, where when they first came in, they were getting rolled up, you know, going to the whole fights, this and that. But as the uh, the sentence played out, you can see they begin to straighten up. You know, they went and got maybe their GED, went to trade school, college, or whatever it is. You'll you'll see that. You know, so if you can get access to that, I think that would be a great um, picture for you to, you know, just see who you're dealing with. You know, because um, it's it's hard to you know, see who people are um, actually, you know, but um, yeah, that's it. Wow. Now that's great insight. Thank you so much. Some people know how to say all the right things to be eligible for parole. Yeah, and that's the thing. Some people, well, Tiffany was out there. Right there. Some people definitely know what they need to say in order to get the job, in order to get you to trust them. So it is, you've got to be really careful, me. Eh? Right. And that, and that's why I said, look at the institutional record, because that will tell you that the real story. Mm -hmm. I got a little something on this too. Um, the one thing that I would really 
err on the caution side, side of caution with is um, knowing your clients. Uh, there's going to be a lot of places that you may clean where that will, there's no toleration, um, you know, financial institutions, anywhere there's money, stuff like that. So, um, and vulnerable, uh, you're any vulnerable clients, right? So you got to really watch that. Um, so if you have a spot for them that you know that they would fit, then by all means, explore it. Uh, so, you know what I mean? So like if I have, if I find that I'm doing pressure washing outside of a building, I don't see any harm with that. You know what I mean? Because they're not going into a bit, place of business. They're not going to be in where, uh, you know, where we call it, um, a, a place of chance, so to speak, um, where something could happen, um, and where people are, are, you know, really cautious and, and don't feel secure. Now, we can't also be, you know, looking at it in the realm of, you know, we're um, categorizing people, you know, because, oh, you know, they had a criminal record and I don't want them in my house, right, without any knowledge of what's going on. Um, but, yeah, just you just sort of want to err, like, say, err on the side of caution based on who your clients are, um, you know, and, and is there a spot for them? You know, I know that if, if I if I was still doing some of the stuff I was doing where I was, um, you know, doing junk removal and, you know, doing a lot of out, outdoor labor, I'd have no problem taking somebody with me. Uh, now, if I'm taking somebody into someone's home or again to a, a financial institution, you, you, you're a little, uh, the, the, the rules have changed, so to speak. So like I say, just, just, just be cautious of, of what service you're providing and for who you're providing it for, you know, if, if you're providing a clean service for a jail, <laughs> I think you're going to be okay. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, they won't let you in. They won't let yeah. you in. <laughs> so, but you know what I mean? So it's just, like I say, just don't put them into a position. Don't try to force somebody into a, into a position, position or a situation that's going to lead them to fail. Right. So just like I say, just, just be cautious of what, who, who it is you're bringing in and, you know, and there might be a level you might say, you know, I will take somebody that was in juvenile facilities her whole life and now is 40 years old and, you know, is, is in the re like Jamie said, in the rehabilitation mode, um, it changes, you know, but if you know that, some, you know, somebody has been in prison countless times for robbery, you're definitely not going to give them a job where you're, where your clients are at risk. So, Thank you. So how do you feel, Tiffany? Do you have a, a sense of direction on this? Yes, yes, I truly do. Um, and that was my main concern was just like, how and where do I place someone or, you know, if, if it's a, if they come in a group, like where would I place them? And I'm still working on that. I'm still gaining clientele. But um, this has all been very helpful and it definitely gives me um, an outlook on how to proceed forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Well, I think it's like any any opportunity to help is a great opportunity, but you really do that. Just protect yourself first. And then your clients. You first and your clients second. We don't want anybody taking advantage of you uh, in order to get to your clients, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Sometimes as business owners, we forget to put ourselves first. Um, and, you know, there are situations where you could be at risk, too. So be careful. All righty, then. If there are no... Jamie, we didn't hear from you today. You, you snuck in there. And we didn't get any uh, <laughs> celebrations or solution finding or anything. Yeah, I was just, you know, trying to give uh, everybody else a chance to get what they need. But um, I, so as far as, I, I, how can I say this? Uh, I'm getting rid of, um, uh, the cleaning crew at the school 
Yeah, it's kind of it's celebratory for me. Um, it's just been now the school. They say that it's the cleanest it's ever been, which is cool. Um, but over the past month, I would say, you know, it hasn't been long since school started, but we've been getting some a lot of complaints, you know, and dealing with schools, you have to remember that um, it's teachers, you know, and they can be irritable at times and very picky, different personalities, you know, um, um, different perspectives on what's clean and what's not, you know, um, because it's just so many different people. Um, so we've been getting some complaints, you know, here and there, and some of them were valid. Most of them were valid. But what I don't like is, you know, when I ask you guys to um, use the checklist, you know, that we have in our correspondence app. And, you know, they haven't been using it. So that right there, um, I give them a lot of, you know, uh, freedom um, to, you know, um, I give them a lot of trust, a lot of freedom. Um to uh, operate, you know, within the lines of um, what's reasonable, if that makes sense. So for them not to, you know, do small things like, you know, hey, we're using uh, the checklist, you know, and I don't make them use the checklist every day. You know, so the days that I call for the checklist and it's not being done, I think it's very, very, uh, it's very disrespectful to me. Um, yeah, so we're going to have to set some examples. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so do you, you already have somebody to take over for them? No, so <laughs> the funny thing is that, um, I, I talked to them about it. And so we agreed because they are subcontractors. We agreed, you know, to uh, do business for the next month. And um, by December, I'll have it, have them replaced. So it was cordial. Everybody's cool about it, <laughs> which is weird, but you know, yeah. Yeah. Let's hope in the next month that they don't get worse if they already know that they're being replaced, hey? Eh? Right. So I'm definitely going to be uh, swinging by there um, and keeping communication uh, with the uh, the uh, janitors, the supervisors. Mm -hmm. um, another option is uh, me bringing my son in um to take over so i'm gonna train them uh the head cleaner now you know she agreed to, to uh you know help train them and so forth when i can't be there but um i'm a little afraid <laughs> i'm a little afraid like you know because uh yeah. it's family right you know and and even more so, it's my son. So I'm a little afraid, but he's like, Dad, I got it, I got it. He's 18. You know, he's like, Dad, I got it, I got it, I got it. And he, he is smart, you know. Um, can, can you have a discussion with your son and, and say to him, what will the conversation look like if this doesn't work out? That's, if I decide that you're not the best fit, what will our conversation look like? Yeah, that's a great perspective. Predestined, you know, the outcome. 
for that. This way, so, yeah. yeah, that way, when you get to that day, if that day comes, I know a lot of families that work together in the cleaning industry and they never have problems. You know, mm -hmm. it works well. I know more families that do have problems. Right. So I think if you already know, if if you say, if this doesn't work out, what will the conversation look like? That gives them the idea that this isn't, this isn't a, no matter what happens, I'll always have a job here. That's right. right. This is a, it's a boundary setting conversation. I think that will do you a lot of good. Yeah, I, I think it would. Thank you so much. Um, and, you know, I thought about it and I'm like, you know, but having a detailed conversation about it no we haven't we we've just uh dealt with the possibility of him coming in and so um but he would have to because he lives three hours from me and so you know he would have to move here it's 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 a few things that need to be you know done for it to happen but um I'm I'm thinking about it, you know. But um for your can, can I offer a little more advice? Yes. Where your son's where your son's concerned because he's 18 for his sake and for his growth of his uh financial stability, I would consider bringing him on as an employee. Mm. Okay. Yeah, plus this we, way, we need one. Yeah, we now need, he's paying taxes. He's yeah. he's entitled to all the benefits as an employee, like a government, like if he gets laid off, he can get EI. Like this yeah. takes the if he's spending his money inappropriately and he won't get in trouble with taxes because you're taking the taxes off for him and paying the government, you know? Mm-hmm. Also, but on the flip side, the flip side to that is I almost never want him to know what it's like to really work for somebody. Well, if he never knows what it's like to work for somebody, how will he ever appreciate having his own? Well, he knows he has to work. It's just I want to teach him to be independent. So it's almost, it's almost like you, you can never miss what you had. You, you never had, you know. Um, I don't want you know, them to. I just, like, you should do what you feel is um, right. You made a huge mistake in this area. Huge yeah, mistake. yeah. And you know, I've already and, been kind of through it with my brother, too. So I understand yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> For sure. Saving your... Sometimes saving your children from the pain you want to save them from denies them denies them the right to yeah. learn from a lesser perspective. Right. Your children weren't they weren't born with a silver spoon in their mouth. They no. have to learn how to be able to survive on their own. So if your son is not a natural entrepreneur, he needs to know the skills to be able to work for someone. Okay. So that's just my opinion. You do whatever you want. But my thought is, is if you teach him what it's like to live with somebody. So if you bring him on board and teach him not live, work. If you bring him on board and teach him what a great employee looks like, and he <laughs> shows that he would be an amazing entrepreneur, then you could say he looks on... I just see that you are destined for so much more than being an employee. And I'd love to help you on your track with that. And then you can switch them over to a subcontractor, but stepping over, he's 18. So young men don't develop their, right. those skills until a little later in life. Yeah. He's 18. And jumping over doing what you have to do in order to get what you want. Is that an, do you feel that that's going to teach him life skills that he'll need if you're not there for him? Um, so it, 
the how can I say? Um he he has, you know, worked other jobs, you know, um but what I mean is like he's still eighteen, right? So he yeah. could have only worked, you know, so long for anybody. So I mean, I just <clears throat> My idea for my children is to, because knowing what I know now, it's like, I don't even want them getting caught up in that stuff, to be honest. Um, you know, building other people's dreams. And I just, I despise it, you know, uh, because I know what I've been through, you know, and I know what it does. It, it just, you know, they get used to that. And it's like, that's what they always run to. But if you don't have that really to run to, then all you know how to be is entrepreneurial. You know what I mean? Um, I just don't want them just having that as a crutch, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, there is a better way out here and, and I know the way. So why would I subject them to any of it? You know what I'm saying? Like I, for me, for example, if everything was to go wrong, you know, with these companies, then my only fallback is to do something else entrepreneurial. You know what I mean? I don't I don't want them to even yeah. I don't want them to, um, I don't want them to have the training wheels. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, I learned how to ride a bike, you know, probably without training wheels. You know what I'm saying? And people can do that, you know. But I, I respect what you're saying for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a really great conversation. I don't think there's any right answer. Um yeah. I can only I can only give you my experience. I mean, Donald Trump's son never worked for anybody else. You know, I'm sure. Uh, well, let's look at the royal family. Which one is it that left to go and have his own life? Like he wants, he doesn't want to uh, be in the family business. He wants to go out and struggle on his own. Mm -hmm. The struggle, you know, they say the struggle is equal to the reward. So if you don't struggle, what is the and, real reward? Yeah, and, and also, like, I know he's going to struggle, you know. I it, It's just I would like for him to struggle with an entrepreneurial perspective than, you know, working yeah. for other people. Does he have that? Is that a natural part of him? Has he, has he had any schooling? Is there anything to back up? Yeah. We did. You know, you know what I found out, Carrie? It's not even about having it these days. <laughs> it's something you got. Uh, like you, it, it, I don't think anybody's. Well, okay, yeah, people could have been raised in entrepreneurial environments. Like I get that. It's being an entrepreneur is not about. Being an entrepreneur is about overcoming obstacles. It's about exactly. problem solving and things like that. So yeah. what I'm saying is that at 18 years old, he hasn't had a lot of problems to overcome. And so uh -huh. that might be too much for him, but it might, but you might be on the right track. He's your son. But I think that the best advice I can give you is ask him. Yeah, for sure. Let him yeah. decide. Yeah. Yeah, we've had these conversations. Um, he's very mature for his age. And to be honest, you know, he has he has dealt with a lot of adversity, just being in a dysfunctional, you know, uh, situation uh, that me and his mother mm -hmm. built, you know, when I was goofing off, you know. Um, so, yeah, he, he's 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 a, you know, um, He's definitely so, a and he is smart. And so, and, and so, my and advice would go two ways. Is. I mean, if 
if yeah, you could give him way. you could give him like you could like you said you could help him get set up as a subcontractor and have his own business and he'll probably he'll probably have a lot of learning curves there as well and so like my advice could easily be the same there that you know if he gets started now then whatever obstacles he has he'll learn to overcome young so you know mm -hmm. i guess my advice could go two ways right mm -hmm. yeah, um, I know what i want he, to he say doesn't, he doesn't do well you know um following orders what i want to <laughs> yeah and that's a problem yeah what i want to say is that yeah, regardless, you know, I'm not going to give up on him, um, you know, and he understands, you know, what's at stake. Um, but like you said, you know, it could go either way. I'm willing to find yeah. out, you know, I'm willing to take take one on the chin, you know. Um, yeah, to at least, I love that. Yeah, to at least see, you know. Um, yeah you know where he's at and and how I could help him regardless is you know if it's in the family business or you know him doing something else so yeah. I I at least have well, to see <laughs> something that I'd like to recommend is that um just like any other uh employee or any other human being, we all need a goal and we need something to work towards. So giving him small steps to achieve. Yeah. Be great. You know what? We watched this movie yesterday, Palmer. Uh, has anybody seen it yet? It's with Justin Timberlake. Um, it is a phenomenal movie. And he was in jail for 12 years and then he gets a job as a janitor and out of school. <laughs> Go figure, right? <laughs> and then he he's working with another with a supervisor and uh in the first day he asks the supervisor has all the keys and he says you know when do i get my keys and the supervisor says when you're ready for it when you can handle it and then he goes through all of this stuff personally it has nothing like you barely see him really at school unless it has to do with something in his personal life and when he starts to get things sorted out with some other adversities going on outside and everything's kind of coming together that's when he gets his keys and that was a huge like when i was watching the movie that was just a huge aha moment for me i think you should watch that movie before you decide what to do with your son man i think i should too yeah i'm what, gonna watch what it. great advice say that is eh? Who, which, <laughs> how many business coaches say go watch this movie first <laughs> all right <laughs> i i want to i want to i want to interject i want to interject um, I, Carrie, we both dealt with this, um, with the, with our daughters. Um, and I also dealt with it with my sons when I was doing drywall. I had them both working with me and one of them decided that going out and getting drunk the night before and not going to work the next day was okay. And I mm -hmm. fired him on the spot. He didn't show up for work. I phoned him and I fired him on the spot. Mm -hmm. Um, there was, there is no, it, 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 it can get really hard. Um, at times, um, and here's a prime example for you. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody knows who Vince McMahon is, right? Yeah. Okay. His son, Shane, his first job at 14 years old was helping set up the ring. He did not get any part of that company, which is worth billions of dollars, until he became into his late 20s. And even then, it was never forced upon him. He yeah. was always asked. Um, his dad did give him shares. He said, here's this, this is your share. This is what I'm giving you now. And you're, and it, he was entitled to do it the way he wanted. And what he did is he actually sold it in order to get into, uh, ultimate fighting. Um, so what he did though, is he did not give his son everything. He, right. he, 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 he made him start at the beginning, just like everybody else mm -hmm. and build his way to it. Um, and in yeah. that, he created a man. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, yeah, and I can tell you, that my dad did the same thing to me. I was 14 years old. My dad came to me and says, you got a job. And I went, I didn't even look for a job. <laughs> and he, he, 
he talked to a guy that my dad used to go to his restaurant every day for lunch. And he said, can you give my kid a job? And that was my first job. I worked for that guy for eight years. And then I worked for him again for a couple more years at different restaurants that he opened up until I was actually 32 years old when I last worked for him. Um, what I'm saying is that it created life skills for me to learn and become more, right? I did own my own drywall business. I have done many different jobs. I've been a leader in different jobs, which brought me to this point now. When you build it and you create the character, you create the portfolio. Is mm-hmm. that's what that's what you see later on. So your son may not become a a prime player in your company, but then again right. he may. So when it comes time for you to hand it off, you have somebody that's been created, has been built up to take over what's there, you know. And he understands the structure. He wasn't handed it, you know. We don't give an A to somebody that didn't write a test or didn't that's do right. a study. So start small, make him, he, the biggest thing about a business is learn, knowing the business from the bottom to the top and mm-hmm. not being at the top and not understanding anything about it, right? You, mm-hmm. you build your business by being at the bottom, working in the trenches and then going outside of it and saying, this is what I've done. This is what I want to create. This is what I want to be, right? Make it a mm-hmm. purpose. So yeah. by doing that, you're going to instill more into your son and you're going to help him way more than by just handing it to him like i did you know brought my kid on at 15 years old and said here here's 20 bucks an hour to come and slam some drywall you know next thing you know he, he they thought they were entitled right it, and that's yeah. what causes and then when stuff goes sideways they don't know how to deal with it so again start small make it easy you know put yeah. him in the job work with him a little bit working with other people, get mm-hmm. feedback from others because the feedback that we have between ourselves and our children is way different than anybody else sees. It. Right. Right. So embrace it, take it in. And again, um, when it comes to something like this, you have to really take out the element of the fact that he's your son. Yeah. He is an employee that you're going to hopefully maybe, you, you know, he, he's the one that you see as taking over as being this you know, leader of your, of your crews or, or whatever he's going to be doing. Um, mm-hmm. But again, don't, don't try to force it. So again, thank, just thank keep you. it small, Absolutely. keep it. Yeah. yeah. And, and especially being 18 years old, like, I don't mm-hmm. know if your son is a, is a star athlete and if he's like an honor roll student and stuff like that, mm-hmm. where he, he's made those progressions already. Mm-hmm. But if he was, if he's lived the, the the hard times already and he and you're trying to bring him out of it, you can't grab him, throw a rope around and rip him out of it. Right, he right. He has right. to grow right. out of that on his own. Yeah. Okay. And I see that. Just want to hear what Jamie's saying, please. No, Go ahead, Jamie. No, I'm just saying I see I see exactly what he's saying because, you know, like um I mean we talk all the time and you know, I see you know, who he's hanging around and, and what he's into. And it's not really um, the most productive, you know what I'm saying? And I know the route that I went down, you know, and I don't want him to ever, you know, um, be a part of that. So a lot of and my son, he's how can I say he's. He, I have to say that he is very street smart. You know what I mean? And he knows what's waiting on him. He knows what's waiting on him. So he sees, he kind of sees this as, you know, a way out as well. You know, um, not just myself. You know, so I don't know. It's like he's very smart. And, you know, um, but at the same time, you know, I understand he's he he's only 18 and um, I oh. definitely have to take it slow with him. I'll definitely, you know, have him insulated and, you know, I'll give him things to do that won't really affect the overall business. I think what my point to you is protect you. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Not your business. I'm not worried about your business. Your business is going to be fine. You will take care of your business, but protect you yeah. through all of this. What the biggest, the biggest problem for me is that it's me suffering. When it comes to working with family, just protect yourself. Just, yeah. you know, I still think it goes back to that very first piece of advice. Ask him what's going to happen, what the conversation will look like if this doesn't yeah. work out. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, God. You know what I say to my, yeah. Now I'm old. Like I'm getting older every day. My friends are starting to get cancer and pass away. And, you know, like this is wasted time and i kick myself i kick myself for not having better uh boundaries for having a more clearly outlined uh job description procedure expectations i kick myself for not having those things so yeah see that that's one thing that like i definitely don't see myself doing um you know the same thing with my brother i had to let him go because he felt he was gonna come in here and you know play supervisor no so yeah it's the same thing with my sons um you know they play sports they know how this goes you know starting from the bottom so um yeah, I don't, I don't play, you know, and, and he know it. So, um, you know, we'll find out probably pretty quick what it's, what it's going to yeah. be. Well, I'm, I'm excited to find out how it all goes for you and to be able to see how, you know, the differences in how you handle it compared to how I, how I did. And hear about your successes and your failures, because yeah. um, no matter what, no matter what we do, we always have failures and successes. So, yep, absolutely. Yeah. As long as at the end of it, you still have your son, you know, your relationship with your son, nothing else matters. Yeah, yeah. You know what? As soon as we hang up, I'm going to call him and have that conversation with him. Because, yeah, yes, that, yep. I can't. That yeah. definitely needs to happen. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you because I remember this feeling. Now, on the good side, I want to say that when my daughter came to join my business, we did end up with two and a half really amazing, wonderful years. Like just the best time that I've ever had in my life, honestly, mm -hmm. with my children. So it was a beautiful two and a half years. It's just very sad how it ended. And yeah. it's, it's, it's funny because it ended exactly how she wanted it to. She wanted to be at home with her child. She wants to be, to have the, to choose her own hours. She got what she wanted, but she still blames me, right? Like she's still angry with me. That's kids. Yeah. Kids will yeah. always blame me. By the way. Yeah, she definitely will come back around, you know. How old is she? She's gonna be she's she's going to be thirty uh next spring. Oh yeah. She's gonna be twenty nine. Twenty nine next spring. Yeah. There's there's time I hope. Like you just never know what's gonna happen yeah, in the right. so I I hate every minute. Yeah. Every minute that my daughter's upset with me or refusing to talk to me or withholding, she's withholding from me, withholding the everyday joys. Right, pictures of my grandson and and pictures of her and the hey mom how are you doing all of that's been like cut off and I just feel like you know you just never know I got to get on a plane pretty soon and go home will the plane make it to the other side who knows like that's what I mean by waste of time I'm like yeah you right kid, you don't know yeah you no know? I said to her outright I said uh, time is wasting and I just don't want you to regret it like. I'll know, like if if I if something happens tomorrow and I'm not here anymore, I know that I've done everything I could to heal this relationship. Like, can you say the same? Because I don't want I, don't, as a mother, I don't want her to live with the regret if something were to happen tomorrow. Because because that's what mothers do and fathers. 
Yeah, like that's a, that's a hard it. pill to swallow. You're right. It's, being a parent sucks because you're never right. I mean, is there anybody here who has children that's ever been right? Like, you're only authoritative. You are never right. It's just the way it is. I mean, if we really think about it, we never get to be right with our children. We're the, they're, we're the cause for the, their entire life's uh, terrible existence. Is that cynical? <laughs> I think it's true. Like that, well, I've been working with a therapist on this, guys, because it's really bothering me. And uh, the therapist said, this is her journey. It's, you don't get to, you don't get to choose when she decides to forgive you. That takes away from her, her right to enjoy this ride, to go through these emotions and have these feelings and eventually have the aha moment. And I said, I'm terrified that something will happen to me and she'll have to live with the fact that we we were not in good standing when it happened. And she said, that is her right as a human being. I'm like, well, it sucks. You know, it sucks. Shouldn't have those kind of rights. <laughs> right? She should listen to her mother. I wish you all the best. Right. <laughs> really hope it goes better for you. Well, it didn't go bad for me. It just ended bad. That's all. It was good when we were doing it. It just ended badly. That's all. She was the best uh, office administrator I ever had. There's nobody that could take her sh shoes or fill her shoes. Probably a big reason why I'm giving up my cleaning company because with her not there, it's just not the same. So it was good. Okay, now I am going to end it because in two minutes, Nicholas will be waiting for me. So... I'm going to head on to my next meeting and thank you all. It was a philosophical day today. That's what I would call today. A lot of deep meaning today. Um, and I really appreciate it because these are important topics too. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.